Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Gamecock Central Radio. Hoops report today with Gamecock great Joe Rett. I'm Emerson Phillips, and Joe, the Gamecocks went all the way to Oklahoma this past Saturday for the SEC Big 12 Challenge in a very tight ball game between the Gamecocks and the Cowboys. Joe, 14 lead changes in the second half of this game alone, and it was Oklahoma State that made the plays over the final few minutes to win the ball game 74 to 70. So, Joe, we've talked all season here on Gamecock Central Radio about the fact that the Gamecocks have found a way to win close games down the stretch. But Saturday at Stillwater, Oklahoma State got the job done. They got the job done down there. And um, uh, unfortunately, uh, we didn't come out with the W. It was a kind of an ugly game. Uh, I, personally, I don't think neither team played exceptionally well. But, you know, by I guess by Oklahoma State, by being at home, they came out with a W because the, the home crowd also definitely probably helped. Um, I give Mike Boynton, give Mike Boynton, former Gamecock, great. Uh, give him a lot of credit. He had a game plan, which a lot of people has been doing. Double Silver, uh, get the ball out of his hand. And Pork Silver, you know, um, they double teamed him every time he touched the ball, and it was very difficult for him to get going. I mean, he still played okay, but when they're doing that, uh, those guys have to make shots. Uh, AJ Lawson. Uh, Felipe Hase, uh, uh, Cassin, uh, they, they all definitely have to make shots to cut out that double team and make it easy for Chris Silva inside. So Chris Silva hit a 10 foot jumper to give Carolina a 63 62 lead with 536 to play, but then Oklahoma State went on a 12 to 4 run, and it was Oklahoma State that won the game late. South Carolina had been doing that much of the early portion of the SEC schedule, but a roll reversal Saturday in Stillwater. So, Okie State wins at 74-70, and they are 9-11 overall. Gamecocks fall to 10-9 overall, but are 5-1 in the Southeastern Conference, and the Gamecocks set to get back into conference play. Coming up on Tuesday night, more on that in just a moment. Silva finished with 15 points against Okie State. It was his 67th career game in double figures for the Gamecocks. Carolina also got uh, 12 from the freshman A.J. Lawson and 10 from freshman Keyshawn Bryant. Foul shots really a part of the story here, Joe. Carolina only got nine free throws the entire ball game, and Okie State was 23 of 29 at the foul line. Certainly helps playing at home in this SEC Big 12 challenge, doesn't it? <laughs> It did help. Uh, being at home definitely helps. And that's a, a lot side of the film. You're talking about the, the difference in free throw percentage. And uh, something that I've always preached on so far this year is um, bench scoring and rebounding. We won both of those battles. I think we barely outscored them on the bench. And we all rebounded. But somehow, uh, we just didn't make enough shots towards the end. Had a couple of turnovers that came down towards the end. And, and again, they won the game on the free throw line. They shot over uh, two, three times more than we did. Now, that was definitely the big difference in the game last night. Joe, before we turn our attention to Tuesday night's home game against number one ranked Tennessee, I wanted to get your thoughts on the results in this SEC Big 12 Challenge. The Big 12 won six of the ten matchups. The four SEC teams that won were Kentucky by eight over Kansas. Texas A&M beat what had previously been a hot Kansas State team, and it was Tennessee over West Virginia, 83-66, and Georgia committed 26 turnovers but shot 12 of 17 from three. Georgia was red hot shooting the basketball Saturday, and they beat Texas by 10. So Georgia avenges that Sugar Bowl loss. I don't know how much consolation that is for Georgia football fans, but Tom Crean's basketball club does win by 10 over the Longhorns. So after Tennessee, the Gamecocks will play at Georgia. Tennessee and Georgia, the Gamecocks, next two opponents. Joe, in this uh, Tennessee-West Virginia game on Saturday, West Virginia, which is 1-6 in the Big 12 and had not won a road game all season, they jumped out to a 19-9 lead over Tennessee, but then Tennessee went on a 22-2 run and really blew West Virginia out in the second half. So Tennessee's number one in the nation right now, Joe. They are 17-1. and They're 6-0 and in the league, and they got off to a bit of a slow start against the Mountaineers on Saturday, but it ended up blowing their doors off. Clearly one of the best teams in the country. Obviously, they're number one this year. But um, as this is not a typical Bobby Huggins thing. West Virginia is normally one of the top-ranked teams annually in, in, in you know the college basketball ranks this year. But they're struggling this year. That's one, you know, that shows you how tough it is. In college basketball, it's one of the years that they are West Virginia is down, but uh, Tennessee is Tennessee, uh, one of the most athletic teams. Coached by Coach Barnes, former Clemson coach, former Texas coach. Now he's at Tennessee, so 
He's done well everywhere he's been. He's a great coach. He's got this Tennessee team back on the map, and it's going to be very interesting on Tuesday night to see how we respond. You know, that game against Oklahoma State, we got to put that behind us. It's not really going to hurt us. Hopefully it don't hurt us too bad. But, you know, that's not a league game. So we get back in the league play on Tuesday night against Tennessee and see, you know, it was a good test for us on Saturday, but Tuesday definitely a better test. We're going to see exactly where we are, where we stand uh, in this conference right now. Yeah, 6.30 start Tuesday night at the Colonial Life Arena. It'll be on the SEC Network. Tom Hart, John Sunfold on the call for the SEC Network. But, Joe, we're expecting a packed house. It's an early start. You know, this is not a 9 o'clock tip. I know home fans, Gamecock fans, don't like that late start. So we're fortunate to have a 6.30 tip time Tuesday night for South Carolina hosting the number one ranked Tennessee Volunteers. And, Joe, in the last podcast that we did here on GCR, we talked about, you know, if Carolina can get to 12 conference wins, that might be good enough to get the Gamecocks into the NCAA tournament. And if one of those 12 wins is over the number one ranked team in the country, <laughs> Tennessee, obviously that would be a huge step toward getting in the tournament. Definitely. We'll open the eyes of the committee as far as uh, getting us into the tournament at, at the end of the year. We can knock off this number one team. At home, we would definitely erase some of the bad losses that we have. Uh, Tennessee's a good team. They're a really good team, very athletic. they um number one for a reason. But uh, there's another winnable game. We can come out. I hope they're they're <laughs> stubborn enough to play us man-to-man and you know, allow Chris Silver to do his thing. But we don't know. We'll see what the game plan is. A lot of people are watching film right now. We're late in the season, and a lot of teams are figuring out, hey, let's uh, – Double team Chris Silva make other people beat us because they saw after that great performance the other night against uh, the other night where he had 32 and 14. A lot of teams are not going to let that happen. So hopefully uh, Tennessee will come in and just play straight man to man and let Chris Silva do the thing. And that'll open up so many doors for everybody else on Tuesday night and give us a chance. You know, we didn't play well on Saturday night, but we still had a chance to win. That tells you that this team is really growing and that, you know, we going to fight. Like we always talk about Frank Martin, they don't fight, they're going to fight to the end, whether they're shooting good or whether they're shooting great. They don't give themselves a chance to win every night. As if facing the number one team in the country were not a daunting enough task, Joe, the one team in the SEC that the Gamecocks have had the most difficulty beating in the last five, six, seven, eight years has been Tennessee. Why do the Gamecocks have a hard time with Tennessee the way they have? Great question. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Um, they've been ranked sometimes. Sometimes they have been ranked. It's just, I remember when uh, Bruce Pearl was there, we had problems with him, and now you got Coach Barnes there, and we're still having issues with them. We will have issues with them. It's just, they always have really athletic teams. They they kind of play, play freely, and they just go out there and have fun and just play basketball. And it's very difficult to stop teams like that when they have all these um, All-Americans and just athletic players out there on the perimeter that just going to attack you every time down the court. But you would think that Kentucky would be the, one of the most difficult, but they're not. No, we always played well against Kentucky. They always came in yep. being highly ranked, and we always amped up for it. So hopefully by them being number one, we can gear up and have that home crowd on Tuesday night that I know is going to be loud. And people really don't understand how much that home that crowd event helps, man. I tell you, when it's jumping and the crowd, you got the number one team in the country coming in. And the crowd just jumping. We have to stay in the game again in the beginning to keep that keep our home crowd engaged. And you know anything can happen when you know keep the game close and the crowd is engaged and we all excited. And you know somehow when you're at home, seeing like shots tend to fall more for you, especially hmm. when we got the crowd behind you. Joe, uh, before Tennessee beat West Virginia in this SEC Big Twelve Challenge on Saturday. They needed overtime to beat Vanderbilt the previous time out. Vanderbilt is winless in the conference, so you always talk about how difficult it is to win on the road. Gamecock fans mm-hmm. need to turn out to the Colonial Life Arena on Tuesday night for the 6:30 game against Tennessee. Make the place loud. Make things difficult for Tennessee. They were nearly beaten by Vanderbilt, and if Vandy can give Tennessee a game, we know the Gamecocks can do the same. Absolutely. So I expect a good crowd, and hopefully we can generate some extra energy and uh, pull out this great win. You know, I remember several years ago when we knocked off Kentucky when they were one on one with the John Walls and I think the Boogie Cousins on that team. Yep. That was one of the my most remember games and it could be that type of atmosphere tomorrow night. And we could pull that out. We could have another more memorable game on tomorrow night, on yep. Tuesday night. 
Gamecocks beat number one Kentucky January 26th of 2010. I was in the building that night, and it was Devin Downey. I believe that's 32 points, I think, for Devin Downey that night. And the reason I remember that so clearly, Joe, is that game was played on my 40th birthday. That's why I remember that so well. (laughs) So that was a great gift for a Gamecock fan. Carolina beat uh, number one Kentucky all the way back in 2010, and the Gamecocks will have another opportunity to beat the number one team in the country coming up Tuesday night. It's the Colonial Life Arena, 6.30 start, SEC Network. Joe Rett, great report today. Always appreciate what you do for us. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Timson. Thanks. That's Gamecock great Joe Rett. Joe and I will come back after this Tennessee game on Tuesday night, and we will preview the dirty Georgia Bulldogs. Carolina will play at Georgia Saturday of next week at 1 o'clock at Hegman Coliseum. And then no midweek game the following week. Gamecocks will have a uh, no midweek game and will return to action on Saturday, February the 9th with a home game against Arkansas. So Joe Rett and I will come back next week, recap Tennessee. We'll look ahead to Georgia here on Gamecock Central Radio. Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs>